All right, everybody, it's been a while, three weeks, and Fedora's been up to some stuff. Let's take a look. So what I've got here is a stock Fedora Silver Blue 37 install. You might have seen this little setup here. We're going to skip a bunch of stuff. Create my user. And my password. The usual stuff, right? Normal stock Fedora desktop. You've seen it before. We're going to skip the tour. However, I'm going to do something a little bit different this week. I'm going to use an RPM OS tree rebase using an experimental feature, uh, using an unverified registry, which is uh, my hosted image. Note that I'm not signing any of this. This is all for demonstration purposes only. Uh, all that kind of production quality stuff we could talk about later. From the GitHub container registry under my user space, and uh, we're going to use something called Ublu Ublu image, which we're going to rebase to here. So what has happened is... Well, first of all, I have an update happening in the background. Let's just make sure that's canceled. We're going to rebase here. So what Fedora has enabled is to boot into an OCI container image. These are commonly referred to as like Docker containers or Podman containers, whatever. Uh, an opencontainers.org image, OCI. Um, now, the very interesting thing about this is that anyone can make an OCI image. And there's a ton of tooling already out there to make an OCI container image. So what we're doing is taking stuff that kind of started in cloud. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, you've heard me talk about this before. and bringing that technology to the desktop. So what this allows me to do is to very easily generate um, custom images derived from Fedora. So what does that look like? So while this is rebasing, because that's going to take a bit, let's... Let's tab over to our browser and take a look. Uh, so those are the examples. I'll get to those in a minute. Uh, oh, here they are. So if you go to my GitHub repo, uh, and usually just uh, if you look at a container file here, these are pretty common in container land. What I'm doing is I'm from uh, Colin Walter's uh, GitHub repo as well for Fedora Silver Blue 37. So this is where stuff is currently sitting. Uh, obviously in the future, you know, that'll be in a more, more official looking uh, URL and all that kind of stuff. But for now, we're playing for fun. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I'm copying the contents of Etsy from this repo into Etsy that's going to end up on the final image a custom script that I made to make all the configs that I want. And then I'm doing the things that I would normally do on my workstation, or sorry, I shouldn't use that word, on my silver blue machine um, after I've installed, right? So I like to remove the distro of Firefox and use a Firefox flat pack. I, you might need to layer a few certain packages or things that you might need uh, for one reason or the other. So um, I'm doing that and I'm using run commands here, just like you do uh, in normal, uh, cloud Docker files. And then I'm setting the update policy. I'm enabling a few services. And then there's an OS tree container commit, which is the last thing that happens. Now, as I was writing this, I was uh, on my local laptop. I would type podman space build space period and build it until, you know, it built. Um, I like to ship things like uh, DistroBox and GNOME tweaks and all that kind of stuff. So could this possibly work? So then what I did is found a GitHub action and kind of cobbled it together. My friend Marco Cheppi and Wayne Witzel helped me with this. That would take this image after it's built um, and then publish it to the GitHub container registry. So container registries are things that hold container, container images. So the nice thing about these is they're in every cloud. Amazon has one, Microsoft had ones. Uh, Red Hat has one with Quay.io. You can host your own. Harbor is, is a project that's uh, commonly used to host your own registry. You could use the Docker registry, uh, any, any sorts of things. So what we're doing now is using the same mechanism that's used to distribute cloud workloads, 
to distribute my own custom operating system image. So feel free to see, you should be able to just copy and paste this and put this into your uh, GitHub and have it build. Um, and I have it building every night because if you look back at the uh, container file again, remember we're deriving this image from Fedora Silver Blue 37. And that image is gonna update on the regular. So I don't want to derive off an image and then never get security updates again or any updates at all, right? So I need to constantly generate this image. And as you would have it, most development tools out there have places to host Git repos uh, and uh, container images. So I'm using my normal personal GitHub uh, resources here uh, to build my own Linux distribution. I don't consider it a final Linux distribution. Like I said, I'm not signing any of these images or anything like that. Um, that's a topic for another day uh, because why, if you wanted to make your own custom Linux distro, you need to have like an open source project with governance and codes of conduct and uh, you know, multiple, multiple people in charge of stuff. Um, but that's not what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm just gonna talk about what's possible here. So if we go back to our custom OS, you see I've rebased to this image. I haven't typed any RPM OS tree commands. And yet here are the changes that I have. And of course it added a few more because it's pulling in the dependencies. Let's reboot. Now, if you recall in the container file, I did copy a custom script over and Luca DeMaio, the distro box author helped me with this. And uh, this is stolen directly from OpenSUSE's micro OS. So I like on first boot, how they install a bunch of the flat packs in the users with the dash dash user um, ticks and um, I kind of wanted to do that in silver blue because I just removed my browser, but I need a browser. So using the power of Zenity, we were able to whip up a little, uh, little thing that does this. Now I am removing the Fedora flat pack repository and enabling the full flat hub repository. So it's going to need my passwords for that. I need to clean that up a little bit. Um, but now, as you can see here, I have a first run experience after booting into my new image. We are now in my custom uh, operating system, which I think is really neat. So what does this do for you? So immediately the first thing I thought about is think about everyone who's uh, building NVIDIA drivers and they have to add third-party repositories or um, you have coppers installed onto your system and then a new version of Fedora comes out, right? And you have to go and you have to fix those up. Currently, right now, everybody is fixing those on their clients, on their PCs, right? So now that we can host our own custom images, that enables us to do all of that work in CI on GitHub or GitLab or what, you know, Atlassian, whatever tool you have, that, that doesn't matter. I just happen to choose GitHub and publish them on whatever registry you have. So uh, in, if you can imagine the first use case that was uh, explained was, uh, you know, we're at work, it's your work image. Right, I wanna bundle the VPN software, maybe your WireGuard config, and you want all your employees to have it. Kablamo, right, what a, what a great way to go, right? Especially if you configure the VPN, uh, they can have access to that internal registry uh, to get the images. And there's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do with this. But I also love it from the kind of personal management of stuff, not because, uh, you know, I expect, I don't expect every Linux user out there to like set up this set up something like this for themselves, but I could see people organizing around themselves in groups and making really, really convenient images derived off of each other that we can share that can just give people the experience that they want. For example, I have an Asus laptop and there's an Asus Linux group that has all the configs and little things that you need to do to get it exactly working on Asus laptops, right? Now we could just put that on GitHub somewhere, build those images, right? And then, um, if you have an Asus laptop, just rebase to it. And then I'd get the right things that it needs and all of that kind of stuff. So as you can see, this unlocks a lot of potential. Now there's a lot of unanswered questions there. Signing of packages. Do I trust these people? All of that stuff. And similarly to the cloud, someone had to figure all that out, right? Like you, uh, you kind of choose things based on the organization that makes the thing, right? So I don't think you're going to be rebasing to, you know, any random George's operating system image. However, for me personally, I see this for advanced users and developers, the way you put your dot files and your scripts in Git, right? And then you get your new laptop 
and then you pull and then everything is perfect and working for you now, right? We can now add the operating system image to that. So whatever custom thing that you have um, is interesting. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's okay because a bunch of people way smarter than me are gonna start building stuff like this. And then what we're gonna see, I believe, is kind of a diaspora of different custom images and builds. So instead of um, you grabbing a script or something like that that might mangle your running operating system, we can now move to that cloud model where we know there's a working image that gets there, right? If you do an upgrade and you mangle the repo or you didn't upgrade the version number or whatever, right? You can't get upgrades on that client anymore, right? If this breaks, it breaks in CI, which means if I were to take that Docker file and Fedora 38 comes out and I rebase to it and it breaks, it will just break in GitHub and never make an image. Um, it never gets to your computer, right? And there's been a few cases where, um, you know, uh, if, if you didn't set up the RPM fusion correctly, you had to do extra steps. What if we could remove that entropy from the client PCs and do it all in CI, like how cloud works. And then I added my own little thing. If you want to keep the vanilla Fedora desktop, keep it, or just click at Ubuntu. And then it does this magic little decomp thing uh, that gives me the, the Ubuntu desktop that I want. So I was able to basically take an existing script that I have and put it in there. Now they fully plan on supporting things like Ansible playbooks. So if you have a bunch of existing scripts and Ansible playbooks, you're really just adding them to Docker files and voila, you've got your own OS built image that's built. I think GitHub takes two minutes to make mine and I have it set up every time I do a little update, it automatically creates it. And then when I go to my laptop and do an update, which is automatically set to update, I get everything that I want. That's really cool. Um, so that's why I'm kind of doing that. So um, if you haven't seen this before, this is just my custom script. It's gonna make the doc just how I like it. It's gonna add the Ubuntu app ind indicators that I like and uh, stuff like that. Let's see, gotta wait for the um, the thing. Is that done yet? Anyway, that finishes up. It moves the doc to the left and does all that other stuff. But I do wanna talk about some of the examples and stuff and other work that other people are doing because it's exciting. So what gave me this idea is Guilty Doggy here posted on the Fedora discussion forums that they had been doing their own thing. They're publishing it on Quay.io. Someday I'll figure out how to pronounce that right. Um, and then I asked them, hey, do you mind show me the container files that you're making? And they're doing the same thing, except they're starting with KDE and then adding the extra files that they need. And here they had a do as, because they use that. And then they copy their config over from their GitHub repo and it goes right in the image, right? So now um, if you don't like something that a distro does, hey, you can just commit it to your Docker file, never have to worry about it again. And then you're good to go. And then they added a bunch of scaffolding here to check to see, you know, if up images get updated, there's going to be a bunch of work in this area, um, the, you know, to make things more convenient for us to reuse and things like that. Again, I'm really excited that this is reusing a lot of the technology we see in cloud. So as I scroll down, more of the people from CoreOS started posting uh, their builds and their builds for pet containers. And I kind of lamented if I wanted to do my own custom silver blue, I had to figure out, uh, uh, OS tree pity workstation, right? Which is like OS tree specific. And there's really nothing like, sure. I could figure it out, but now I got to set up a web server. Like I got to do all this. Stuff. I don't want to do any of that. I could just make a Docker file now and just publish it to a registry and then take that URL and rebase to it. And that that's really what I'm looking for. That democratizes the ability to run custom builds. So more people started put, posting more stuff, including these layering examples, which is what I'm going to talk about here next real quick. Uh, let me show you a few. So one of the things I like to do on my machines is install Tailscale. Tailscale is a third party repo, right? And you would layer this onto your, uh, uh, on, onto your workstation or your server or whatever. Well, now they have this little snippet that I can put in my thing. And now my image will just have Tailscale. So all of my personal machines will already be VPN, you know, literally out of the box, like when I have them installed. And this is just the example. You could, any third party repo thing that you think is important to you and you want on your image, you can now just put it on there. Now I like to keep things small. That's why I'm doing a lot of flat pack stuff in the background, you know, things like that. Um, 
However, I could see a lot of use cases for people who have that custom bit of software. Maybe they need that dedicated appliance server OS. Uh, and now they could use all those tutorials and everything around there around Docker files and then easily just spit out uh, custom images. As you can see, I think this will be very, very popular uh, with a lot of folks. Um, they have examples here of replacing your kernel, right? How many times have you seen a user come into chat? Hey, I tried to use some custom kernel thing that I need that I found on a third party repo uh, because of it. What if we could just provide and generate images for those people, you know, so that they can have a working computer without having to learn this stuff? What if the only people that had to learn about third party repos were the people generating the Docker file and container files and then normal people never have to deal with it again? Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, so there are a lot of great examples in here, injecting custom programs where you can do the build steps as part of the build process, and then just inject that binary into the image and things like that. So a lot of good examples here. Uh, again, I'm really looking forward to seeing how people take their custom Ansible scripts, make their own stuff, and then just, uh, share with others. This stuff has literally just landed the other day. Uh, it, I have no idea when it's going to go into, uh, Stable, I'm assuming by Fedora 38, by the end, uh, by this spring or whatever. But for now, I'm just grabbing stuff and I'm building it. And I've just realized that you can kind of make your own personalized distro that you want for yourself and you can share it with your friends. And um, I'm just running it all out of GitHub. Similar to like how people kept, keep their home directories and things like that. I can now have that fully managed declarative experience. Some people have asked me on this channel, what I think of Nix OS. I think the idea is amazing. It's a bridge too far for me because I don't want to learn a new language. You know, this takes the existing lingua franca of cloud and server, which is Docker files and container files. And then lets me do that at the operating system level. And I think this is really cool stuff. Looking forward to playing with it and uh, let me know how you get on. And I'm sure head over to the Fedora discussion forums. And if you're going to start generating your own stuff, let's Let's see what's out there. Who's going to make a, uh, I know there's an official Sway one, but I'm sure there's a fancy window manager or something out there that you can't get um, out of the box on a silver blue like system. So let's see what people start making and let's, uh, let's talk about it with that. Um, sorry about my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather, but uh, have a good time and let me know how you're getting on. Cheers.